welcome back to the Mark King Properties YouTube channel where we talk about all things from how to sell your house quickly, how to sell to a professional cash buyer and so much more. Here you'll find videos that are instructional, useful and really helpful when it comes to navigating the ever-changing property market. Today we're going to be talking about all the things that are involved when it comes to purchasing and selling a leasehold property. So if you're ready, let's get to it. So we know that anything to do with leasehold, understanding it, knowing what it is and negotiating your way through it can be a very challenging process. This video is for buyers and sellers alike detailing everything you need to know when it comes to dealing with a leasehold property. Number one and that is the freeholder ultimately controls everything and what we mean by this is the freeholder controls the land that the property is built on. So in effect, they control the building. We would always suggest that when going to purchase a property that if you can opt for freehold because there are no challenges and complications that can arise, this is not the case when it comes to a leasehold. The main difficulty that this presents is that if the lease drops below 70 years in time scale, you will find it very, very difficult to secure a mortgage on and the costs involved to buy the freehold can be very, very expensive. Just to give you guys a quick example, Marking Properties purchased a really rundown property a few years ago, valued at about £50,000. When we requested the details to buy the freehold, they tried to charge us a scandalous amount of money. I think it was around 20 grand and the property was only worth 50. So again, lots of complications and you just want to avoid it if you can. Next thing you need to know is that when you're dealing with flats and apartments, you would normally apply to extend the lease, but you can only do this when you form a company. So it's common for leaseholders to group together, form a company in order to co-own the freehold because it, again, it can be very, very expensive. Another thing to know is that with larger and older apartment blocks, Freeholders can burden you with ever-changing maintenance costs as an annual service charge. Poorly managed or unscrupulous freeholders can spiral these costs and once developments get a reputation for high service costs, they become less desirable and they drop in value. With the awful tragedy at Grenfell Tower, many blocks are now requiring extensive removal and recladding. Any buyer would find it extremely difficult to secure any kind of loan or mortgage, which really does then limit you to only being able to sell to a cash buyer. It is so, so important that when you're considering buying or selling a leasehold property that you get all the certificates and documents involving any service charges, details about how much surplus funds there are in the pool for maintenance, money for any future repairs for the building and details on historical repairs or plans for future maintenance. We would always suggest speaking to the management company before selling because this can actually reduce the amount of time needed to compile all of these documents, which will of course avoid delays and avoid the sale collapsing altogether. And also it gives the buyer all the information and plenty of time to make an informed decision early on. If the property has a shorter lease, you need to request the cost of extending it as early as possible. If you're unable to pay for the lease extension yourself prior to selling, your solicitor can give notice to the freeholder and package in the lease extension as part of the sale, with the payment coming from the sale completion funds. This allows the lender and surveyor to value the property at the open market value and in doing so, it will save the buyer the added cost of extending the lease to a further date. An unfortunate thing that we're seeing, especially when it comes to modern houses on development estates, is the service management costs increase for maintenance and the general upkeep of these estates. In our opinion, this is an area that will definitely cause more issues as the estates get older. Management company also have restrictions and covenants within the freehold titles. And these costs can be very similar to the cost that you would see as service charges on a leasehold property. This is another reason why we want to reiterate that when you're given a choice, always opt for freehold because then you are not burdened once again with overarching management agreements. If you have no way of contacting the freeholder, then it is worth doing a land registry check. This can be done very easily online to see if any details have changed on the title or if the freeholder is missing. And if that proves to be the case, then you can get your solicitor to arrange indemnity insurance. However, in the case of an insolvent freeholder or dissolved companies, it can create difficulties as the house could then become property of the crown. Make sure that you get all the necessary legal advice and guidance when it comes to this so that no details go on to derail the sale. 
And those are the main things that you need to know when considering to buy or sell a leasehold property. Of course, if you have any questions for Mark, you can pop them in the comments box down below. And we are going to be doing a blog post on this subject, so stay tuned for that. It should be coming very soon. And if you are in South Wales and you want to sell your house for a fair cash offer and complete within seven working days, check out our free valuation form in the description box down below. Thanks for watching.